Would it surprise you to learn that live video gaming is the fastest growing sport in the world? Born in basements and living rooms, interest in esports has been growing in school districts as educators see the many opportunities for learning. Layla Bowman is Senior Program Officer with the Samueli Foundation and Chief Strategist with the North American Scholastic Esports Federation, where esports are seen as a platform to acquire the skills needed to thrive in work and in life. Thanks so much for taking some time to join us today. Well, thank you for the invitation. I'm excited to share what we're doing. Esports is a broad term. What does the term encompass and when did the competitive element become popular? So with NACEF, which is North America Scholastic Esports Federation, we really focus on scholastic esports. And so scholastic esports is the intentional use of esports for learning and teaching. So I can speak to scholastic esports and how we look at it, but we do know that esports traditionally, if you can use that word, uh, has been growing really in, in the ways that people use any kind of video game competitively, really, though, its explosion has occurred with the, the large, you know, gaming uh, and the competitive leagues that have appeared in the last decade. Well, even the International Olympics Committee is taking a look at esports for the 2024 Games. Is there a difference between regular esports and scholastic esports? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, number one, we utilize in classic esports the passion that kids have for gaming. There is no denying that with 98% of all teenagers having played at least one game in their lifetime and over 50% of adults having played at least one video game in their lifetime, that it's part and parcel of everyone's life. And I don't think anybody can forget that the 14-year-old who won, uh, I think it was a $3 million purse in the Fortnite Championship where they had an audience that was greater than the Oscars and the Super Bowl and I think it was the FIFA championships, I believe, all combined. So we know it's not just a, 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 a shiny object. It's here. It's big. And all of the careers that are around it, which are STEM-based careers, are growing. So we know that kids love it. We know there's a, a, a growing profession around it as well, and that the skills that are needed to be successful in, that, in the professions are the same kinds of skills that we want to see in our students in high school. So whether it's, you know, you know, being able to collaborate with one another, to be creative problem solvers, to be curious and persistent, those skills can be really developed and honed around a passion for esports, but we can connect that as well to all of the careers that are there. So we don't want to think about making or having kids just be pros. That's really not what we do. We say the pro life is what you're going to kind of go through and open up this world of with classic, of classic esports with the professions that are there. And, and they're great. There's a myriad of them from health and wellness, exercise physiologists, nutritionists, psychologists, of course, and content creation, producers, shoutcasters, uh, the, you know, the, the, broadcast, the broadcast area is huge. Management, data analytics, it's just a growing, it's just growing and growing. And if you love esports, there's a whole world out there for you. So Scholastic Esports is bringing that together. So what does an esports competition look like? And is it a spectator sport? So there are players, there are participants, and there are enthusiasts in, in traditional esports. And yeah, absolutely. It's uh, a fun thing to watch. And I've seen tons of, you can see them on East, uh, CS, ESPN. Um, they're uh, certainly on Twitch. There are tons of channels for alternate types of esports competitions. And to the casual observer, it would look like an incredibly excited um, participants and audience that you'd see in any, any sport, like you see at an NBA Finals. But instead of um, going up and down a court, you'll see the players actually looking at computer screens with controllers in their hand, sweating and working and, co and communicating with one another figuring out their strategy and attempting to win, just using different kinds of tools. In Scholastic Esports, which is, where, again, we're utilizing the love that kids have for esports to teach them about all different types of careers and skills that are, you know, concomitant with it. Imagine, we have in NACEF, and if you go to our website, nacef.org, you'll see our, our, our curricular framework 
And we really split up esports into four different domains around organization and strategy and entrepreneurship and content creation. So if you're going to a scholastic esports tournament, you'll still see all of the incredible excitement of kids having a ton of fun, but you'll also see all of the other work that other kids in that club make to support their team because scholastic esports is more than just the players. It's all of the kids in that club supporting them. When, whether they're fundraising, whether they're making an e-commerce site, whether they're defining, you know, making the logo or just helping the team get better with that, you know, data analytics, it's, it's far more than the players. We celebrate everybody. Well, there's no question there's a stereotype around the typical gamer. Are there misconceptions about gaming and competitive gaming that still persist? I, I would say that there are misconceptions and some of them are found well founded, you know, maybe a couple of years ago in terms of uh, esports being very specifically about boys, for example, or uh, maybe there being a toxic environment that's not necessarily the most inclusive for uh, the LGBTQ com community or, or women. So NASEF, we've put our, our focus is really on and our mission is on making it making esports accessible as a learning tool for all students. And that again is beyond the, beyond the players. Many of the kids in our clubs don't necessarily play or compete. They just want to, but they love esports. They want to be, a, they want to perhaps learn how to run a tournament or they're really interested in sports psychology and how to make those players better. So we first, and the, one of the very first acts that occurs at NACEF club is they actually, the, the team and the club get together and they sign a code of conduct. You, know, you can't be toxic. You can't be a bully in our clubs. If you do, you, you can't play. You have to have a certain GPA, just like any other team in high school. You have to have a, t a GPA because you want your team to only, you know, to be academic as w and scholarly as well as uh, competitive. We call them scholar gamers. Uh, so it's the, the old image of that esports player grinding away in the dark. That's not a scholastic esports players. Ours, you know, we're, we've got great students. They're disciplined, certainly in their game, but they are leaders in their school, um, and, and we celebrate them. And so does their entire school, and so does their community. So you were actually proactively addressing diversity, inclusion, and some of the negative aspects associated with competitive gaming. Absolutely. We, we don't want uh, that image and that stereotype uh, to really be a, a cloud um, because it's it's inaccurate of what is ha what's happening with students in gaming. In fact, part of our mission is to really reach out to the most disenfranchised students that love to game. Our, our curriculum and our clubs have been researched by the University of California at, Ir uh, at Irvine. And the research, which is independent of, of, of NASEF, has found that in fact, we most the greatest impact we have is in the social and emotional growth of our students. We build community with our students. We create STEM identity and STEM value in our students. And most importantly, kids feel positive about who they are. And if you feel positive about who you are and you feel really positive about your, your self-worth and confident, you'll take on risks, you'll be curious, and you'll grow. And that's what we're investing in. Well, the world of professional sports certainly took a major hit during the pandemic. Esports fared much better in comparison. What benefits have gaming communities provided during this pandemic? Well, we were the only game in town. <laughs> so that never won. So in, in scholastic esports, our kids were still playing. The rivalries between schools when kids were still at home were still lively. Kids were still working in school because their GPAs needed to be up to stay on their team. They were practicing and connected. So esports uh, it continues to be a place of community where kids and participants and enthusiasts and parents can get together no matter where they are, whether you're on your phone or where you're in your, uh, your school computer lab, where you're at home, people can still join. And it's probably, I would say, because of the pandemic, it's, it's not that it's grown more, but it's shown a spotlight on the possibilities and really that it's not a, a redheaded stepchild, but actually equal to any of the other sports and really growing and in a positive way. 
there's so many great stories of students that have grown because of esports that students that perhaps nobody would have known and now they're they're leaders in their school they're applying to college they're role models and I, I think what the pandemic did was it really shone a light and spotlight a spotlight on these students and their teachers and their schools that are progressive and looking forward and providing new opportunities to them well without question esports is a global phenomenon and one that's able to quickly adapt and thrive in a global crisis. It's an industry that's booming and creating game changers along the way. Layla Bowman, thank you so much for sharing your expertise on this topic today. My pleasure. Thanks very much.